76 year old sister to their Benz. And you shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's probably what he sounded like. And <laughs> that, that shit is said. terrifying. <laughs> no. <laughs> 76 In the middle of the night you just hear hello i would be terrified <laughs> i'd be terrified though after seeing what mr frog does horrified scarier than any fucking horror movie out there uh so we're recording this video on october 1st it's not gonna come out until i believe october 31st um and technically this is an old script in fact this video is technically counted as a remake of an old video one of my earliest videos you guys and I figured it's been a not original <laughs> remake. I figured it's been long enough that um, it's due time for uh, what? Do, how do I describe it? I guess yeah, just a remake. <laughs> Hopefully with better quality and with the help of YouTube, this shit is gonna be so unhinged. Well, it doesn't matter if this is a remake because this will be all new information to me because I have not watched any of your videos in so long. So. So you're not supporting the benefit. Do you, guys, do you guys not support That's my content? Not dedicated. Not even Barack Obama. I'm subscribed and following. There's my support <laughs> to your channel. You're, not, you're gonna unsubscribe. <laughs> the views are the what again. makes the most money. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny doesn't want any coffee. That's why. Yeah. I could leave the Discord card no. right now, Jordan. No. I could leave it right now. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna begin, all right? I'm gonna start reading the script. I'm gonna try to be as composed as I can. I don't know how you guys are gonna be, how are you guys gonna do? Ready? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Let's just sum up. Oh, God. Oh, deep breaths, hold on. <sighs> Halloween. My favorite I'll day of- here. <laughs> I didn't get to the first sentence. Make sure let him get a word in. The, the composure <laughs> ruined instantly. Come on now. Oh my god. This is going to be so difficult with you two. More specifically, AJ. He's crumbling like fucking Masapan. <laughs> Bitch, let me read. <laughs> um, this is going to be so fun to edit. Halloween. My favorite day of the whole year. It is so much more than just your typical holiday. It's a day of fun, a day of festivities, and more importantly, a day of horror. On Halloween, we embrace horror. We want to be scared, and truth be told, no other holiday elicits such a response. No other holiday allows you to become whomever you'd like for a day, and have no one judge you. Unless of course you dress up as one of these offensive Halloween costumes, according to BuzzFeed. Anyhow, my point is, Halloween is an amazing holiday. One that should be celebrated by everyone, and for the most part, many do. Some celebrate by going trick-or-treating, watching a scary movie, going to a party... Did I really write watching a scary movie twice? <laughs> Disgusting. Damn, I'm such a bad... Red old me? Added old me? Such a terrible writer. How did I not catch that? I wonder if it's in the old video. <laughs> Anyway. Wait, are you using your exact Minor same script? Yeah, because I'm just like, I thought it'd be really <laughs> funny if I remade this script or Play this video ID. with you two. Myself? Bitch, what? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Anyway, I'm gonna continue. Because this, this is still the intro, you guys. We haven't even gotten through the first entry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Regardless of how you may celebrate, I think we can all agree that Halloween is a fun holiday for ages young and old. Then again, as with any day in the year, bad things are also prone to happen. Whenever you step outside your home, that is. Whenever you step outside, you see people. <laughs> Honestly. Bro. Damn. I went Interactions. I, uh... I tried. <laughs> Do you guys have any idea how hard it is for me to get a haircut? I go out and I dread it because there's so many people inside the like the barber and I'm just like fuck fuck fuck. <laughs> it's it's called get a making reason. early appointments then. What? What'd you just say? get a razor and go bald. That'd be the easiest method. I can't do that. <laughs> I still somehow fucked it up last time. <laughs> well, because you didn't go further down, you kind of just did a buzz cut. Well, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> where was I again? I lost my nah, place. Nah, we need to see some shine on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get back to the script now. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> 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 
Despite hyping up Halloween as this astounding holiday where nothing bad can happen, and for the most part I argue it is, there is still malice in the world. And with that malice comes real, mysterious, maddening, terrifying horror. If you are going out tonight, be warned, terrible things have happened on Halloween. In the past, all of them quite disturbing. Alright, cool, cool. What'd you think of the intro? Spooky. Thank you, thank you. Adrian? Relatable. How? <laughs> anyway. Because... <laughs> fuck me. That is, that... Is, fuck, I'm not gonna explain myself. <laughs> uh... The Disappearance of Stephen Demon On October 31st, 1955, a young mother, Marilyn Demon, took her two-year-old son, Stephen, and her seven-month-old daughter, Pamela, to a supermarket in East Meadow, New York, in search of candy to pass out to the local trick-or-treaters. Marilyn's eldest, Stephen, was throwing a tantrum and didn't want to go inside, and so she allowed him to stay outside so long as he took care of his sister in her carriage. She stepped inside and after 10 minutes of shopping, she found that her children, her children, she found that her children, <laughs> she, she uh. found, she stepped inside and after 10 minutes of so what the fuck, <laughs> I can't read you guys, this is my own script too, I know the act, the act, she stepped inside and after 10 minutes of shopping, she found that her children were both missing, in a panic, she called the police. Adrian, <laughs> <laughs> that's so out of pocket. <laughs> you're like, fucking sucks to suck, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, get good. My Don't God. never lose your kids. Adrian, he was like seven. <laughs> you get it. You, you, give them, you get them the monkey backpack leash. Have you seen those? Yeah. How effective. You think you think but they, he didn't, they left them outside. Them. Yeah. That would have just made them easier to get kidnapped. <laughs> he gets two no, for the price of one without trying. <laughs> to a pole. <laughs> oh my god. In a panic, she called the police, and they quickly got on the case. To their relief, the carriage was found only a block and a half away from where it had gone missing. Eerily Despite Pamela being found in the carriage, safe and sound, Stephen was nowhere to be seen, and has yet to be found to this day. Yeah, so it seems like they found the daughter, but not, not, the, not the actual kid. What do you think happened to him? Other than Texas, the fact that he got kidnapped. Finding. What? Damn, they didn't want the baby? They didn't want the baby, they left the girl. <laughs> They looked at her and they said, this one could use a few more years. We'll be back for her in 5 to 10. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> a case of mistaken identity. In Pasadena, California in 1993, three boys all around the ages of 13 to 14 were all out trick-or-treating when they found themselves caught in a hail of gunfire. In an unfortunate case of mistaken identity, three members of a Bloods gang waited patiently for the boys to approach. They were under the notion that the three boys were part of a rival gang, who were responsible for killing one of their friends, only a couple of days earlier. As the three young trick-or-treaters got closer, the three gang members pulled their triggers without hesitation. All three boys died on the scene. As for the gang member... Ah! What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> that scared Fua! <laughs> that scared Fua! <laughs> Not the stock audio, <laughs> bitch. I use that for my scary stories narration. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> anyway, as for the gang members, well, they were convicted, 
and all of them were sentenced to death in 1995. <laughs> 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 what the fuck, Adrian? <laughs> oh my god. No one's gonna like this. <laughs> hey, justice was served. Justice was served. Justice was served. Yeah, they. F- I don't want to say they deserved it, but they deserved it. <laughs> One of them cursed the right. jury. One flashed gang signs as he was taken away. And the last simply stayed silent, but all three still remain on death row. So it seems they're not dead yet. Although this script is old, so they might actually be dead. If they have died, I will put it up on the screen somewhere here. The death of Chris Jenkins. 21-year-old University of Minnesota student Chris Jenkins went out with his friends Halloween night 2002 near downtown Minneapolis bar. They were each having a fun time laughing at each other's costumes, dancing and drinking. As the night went on, each of them went home, one by one, until Chris was the only one left at the bar. At around midnight, Chris decided to head home, and as it stands, the bartender was the last to see Chris alive. That night, he vanquished- he vanquished- no, he vanished, my bad. (laughs) Damn, fucking Elden Ring boss. (laughs) As soon as he stepped through the door, <laughs> the boss how far appeared. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that night, he vanished without a trace and became a missing person for four months until his body was discovered in the Mississippi River. He washed up, still wearing his costume from the. <coughs> Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. We're, I, my, I got my throat got really dry. Um. He washed up. I know. I know how to solve that. How? With coffee. Give me a second. Oh god, yeah. he's looking for something. This, this video's been sponsored with. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Not the G Fuel. Oh my god. I fucking wish G Fuel. Please sponsor me. <laughs> oh, you gotta give him that hawk to <laughs> In my throat, Adrian? <laughs> Adrian, what the yeah. fuck? You <laughs> said... Right no, in my you know what, you're right. That's what a true homie <laughs> would do. <laughs> Open up. Right, <laughs> right in the throat. I'm gonna put a picture of Venom right there. Yeah. Just oh, you, you gotta give him that hawk <laughs> Anyway, he washed up, still wearing his costume from that Halloween night. His death ruled a suicide. Come fall 2006, after his family continued to press police to keep investigating, Chris Jenkins' mysterious suicide was later classified as homicide. His death, speculated by some to be the result of the smiley face killer, Oh shit, I remember that. I did a whole video on that. Do you guys know the smiley face killer? No. Nope. Okay, so really quick, what's it called? The smiley face killer. I made a video a long time ago, so if people have out there haven't seen it, you guys should go watch it. It's absolute shit. <laughs> but what's it called? Um, the serial killer is like a hypothetical killer. It's a theory, really. About a serial killer who kills along like rivers and shit. And he kills, like, young men around college age. Some people speculate that it's, for like, a homophobic killer, but not necessarily all the people killed were gay. Although, I don't know, they might have been closeted, but that's putting words into dead people's mouths, and that's not okay. But that is what, yeah. the, theor- that is what the theory posits, you know? Uh, and he's kind of keeps on killing. All these people killed and left by the river, they were found near some graffiti of a smiley face. So people think that all these deaths of these college-age students were the result of the same killer. But on the other end of the spectrum, some people say that, you know, a smiley face is the easiest thing you can graffiti, right? Yeah. So it, it, could, it is also just a theory because, sure, it's a lot. Like, they, they could all just be coincidences, but also a lot of people say a lot of coincidences is a pattern. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Yeah, they're... There's no way that th- those are all coincidences. Like, what do you guys? Like, like, what are the chances that the body washes up like right next to a graffiti smiley face? That that's nah, that's crazy. You think so? 
No, that has to be the end. I, I, my, my thoughts on it is that my initial thoughts are in it that like, yeah, maybe not all of them, right? Like, I think some of them are could possibly be be the same killer, and the others yeah. could just be like blaming it on the killer, or they just get lucky with the smiley face. You know what I mean? Mm. Do you think they're smiley men? That is another extension of the theory that it's a group of killers because there's also like a bunch of these killings. I could probably revisit that someday. That'd be fun. Fun. We're talking about people murdering. <laughs> it's funny. I, just, what? Oh, <laughs> I decided to be like, oh, I'm not a <laughs> fucking Adrian. Uh, I'm just going to the next one. <laughs> a real life <laughs> boogie, man. Wait, what? What were you going to say? No, no, go boogie ahead. Go man. ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> Adrian, why do you have all these spooky shits? Boogie, man. He was ready. He was ready. I, I love that. I love that for I love that for us. But what were you gonna say, Johnny, before I go to the <laughs> Andrew, what the fuck? I was gonna say that it sort of sounds like Legion, because you said that it's like oh, a group of killers. Yeah. Yeah. And how Legion's face mask it, like you know, it's a smiling face too. Oh, from Dead by you think and there's no way they they like Inspired Dead by Daylight got inspired by the smiley face killer. <laughs> I'm honestly wouldn't not be sure, first but I, I wouldn't put it past them, you know? What do you mean, like? Because Dead by Daylight gets inspo from a bunch of shit. That's fair, that's fair. Like, in a good way, you know? Like, they, they include both historical stuff in there. I suppose. Yep, they're original with their content, unless, um, compared to other people. Hmm. That'd be kind of fucking cracked or creepy, actually, if they made Legion inspired by the smiley face killer. I never actually like put that together one to one. Legion's it's a, a far reach, but yeah, you never know. Yeah. It's there. The threads are there. Anyway, next one. A real life boogeyman. On October thirty first, nineteen eighty. Adrian, let him get through this. <laughs> what the fuck? It's the real life boogeyman. That's spooky. Sure. <laughs> okay. On October thirty first, nineteen eighty one, Maria Cialella. 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 That was bad. That was bad. <laughs> okay. What I'm sure we've done this script before. Yeah, you maybe, know how to all. maybe like three years ago, you guys look at the chat real quick. How do you pronounce that? Ah, uh, hell no, he's gonna catch us <laughs> in 4K. How do you how do you pronounce, I pronounce that? it? As no, Adrian, <laughs> pronounce that shit right now. You first, Adrian, since yeah, you're playing you around. <laughs> come on, Adrian. Hey, come on, Adrian, <laughs> pronounce it. Okay, wait, wait. What what race was this person? I don't know. Yeah, that, that that everything. I don't know. That changes you everything. You don't know. You have these. Oh, well. You have I, these stories, and you don't know the background of information about them. Oh no, I have it. I'm just saying I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> pronounce it, Adrian. You How do you pronounce that? Bitch. How do you pronounce it? You're trying to do it with like a Spanish accent. Like you heard that shit, right? You heard that. <laughs> yeah, he did. I did hear that. Let's see. Adrian, fucking pronounce it right now. <laughs> we'll call her Missy. No, no, pronounce it. <laughs> We're not moving on to pronounce it. Oh my god. I guess th I guess this video is gonna be edited even longer. Then <laughs> I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny. Yeah, how about you? <laughs> hold up! Hold up! Wait. <laughs> I'm googling oh, this shit because you're not <laughs> catching me. You're not catching me fucking this up. <laughs> She's from New Jersey. That doesn't help. It doesn't help. Come on, Johnny. See y'all. See y'all. Can we? 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 Can <laughs> exactly. Can we agree with Cialella? Yeah, let's go with that one. Okay, Cialella. Cialella yeah. All right, cool. 
on. Adrian has these shits on lock. On October 31st, 1981, Maria Cialella was on her way home from a late night trip of trick or treating. The young 17 year old was hanging out with some friends before she made her way home. She waved them goodbye and was on her way. Unfortunately, Maria, on her way home, encountered convicted criminal Richard Biegenwald, who quickly abducted her. He took her to his mother's house, shot her, and dismembered her. Biegenwald's wife knew of his crimes, but did nothing about them. He showed his wife Maria's corpse, and when she asked him why he did it, he responded with, I did it for the hell of it. Not your typical trick-or-treater. On Halloween 1982, in Fort Dodge, Iowa, 69-year-old Marvin Bradland and his wife, Ethel, were handing out candy to trick-or-treaters who came by to pay them a visit. Little did they know that one trick-or-treater in particular would be the end of Marvin. At one point, when they heard a knock at the door, they stood dumbfounded. As a man wearing a mask quickly stated, Trick-or-treat, give me your money or I'll shoot. Initially, they thought this was some kind of- Give me your money. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Is that a me or- yes. It is. I haven't heard of this. What is this? Uh, let me... I'll send you the link. We'll find it for you. We'll find it for you. Okay, send it to me later then. Initially, they thought this was some kind of prank. That was until the man barged in and drew his gun. He then demanded the couple take him downstairs to the basement and opened the safe where the couple stashed their money. They quickly grew suspicious, as only a few people knew of the safe, his closest friends, and his family. As the three made it downstairs, Marvin reached for his gun, and the intruder shot him point blank in the neck, killing Marvin almost instantly. This death left Ethel distraught, and she became reclusive. She refused to speak with anyone, and eventually, she was left so traumatized that a few months later, she ended up passing away. That, that is super suspicious though, right? That, what's it called? The dude who came in with a gun immediately knew where the safe was. I would like yeah, to- Yeah, definitely have to be yeah, someone Yeah, for sure. Know. My money- Inside job. My money is on, like, one of their relatives. I would have to do more research into it. I'm not quite sure. If I find out who it is... Is it Saul? I, it probably is at this point. But if I am able to find it, I'll put it right here. I'll edit it in right here, and then I'll read it to, like, the audience. You guys will see in... Once the video is done. When it's out on October 31st. I think I'm going to be editing this one this, Saturday, this Sunday. So that'd be cool. That'd be fun. Anyway. A lifelike display. In Frederick, Delaware, 2005, locals were out having fun as they went around town in search of candy. The town was littered with Halloween decorations. There were pumpkins galore, cobwebs aplenty, and rubber props laying around. The town was full of decor, so one, hypothetically speaking, could hang themselves on a tree and wouldn't stand out too much. If only it were simply a hypothetical question though. That Halloween night, a 42-year-old woman committed Fuck, I'm gonna have to bleep that. That Halloween oh. night, a 42 year old woman committed oh. unaliving. Adrian, let me read. Committed <laughs> the deading. Self deading. The self exit game. I'm gonna use that. That Halloween night, a 42 year old woman committed control alt delete on herself by hanging herself <laughs> on a tree. <laughs> this, sound <laughs> this sounds so disingenuous. No, we do feel bad. I don't know about Adrian. Adrian's something else. He's crazy over there. <laughs> um, Adrian, uh -huh. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm making you the scapegoat for this video. Uh, <laughs> 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 it hung 15 feet high, and no one was ever the wiser. Trick-or-treaters would pass by under it, and the body hung there without any alarm for a good while. It simply went unnoticed that this body was actually real, and not just another prop. It was only noticed the following day, when neighbors decided to take a closer look, thinking it was just a prank. Once they did, they could smell, 
and see the prop for what it really was. The decomposing corpse of a distraught woman. Would you guys... Mm -hmm. It's insane to hear that this is not even the only time this shit has happened. I have another unfinished script where I found three more cases of this found of this happening, not including this one, so that would be four. And I found a shit ton more, but I didn't want to make that script too long. And in that script, I only included three because I'm like, otherwise I'd be here for so long. But to me, it's just so crazy that no one actually noticed this shit, you know? Well, I mean, people would probably think it was just a decoration. Well, yeah, but, but it's like, like, that's just fucking so crazy to me, <laughs> that it's just like, the, yeah, that yeah, it would go unnoticed, but it's like, kind of unbelievable in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, if you look at, like, current, like, freaking go to Spirit Halloween, you can see, like, the attention to detail to decorations nowadays. Yeah, a lot of them are super crazy. You guys, I went to Spirit Halloween, you know, the other day, you guys saw it, you guys saw it, I went with Angel. And yeah, yeah. there was this little girl who walked through the, what's it called? Um, she was walking through like the little carnival area that they had set up to show, you know, Spirit Halloween always has set up like little ways to decorate your house or whatever. And in the, uh -huh. carna and in the carnival area, she walked through it. And on the other side, there was a clown animatronic that was just thought to be a statue because it was a movie. And then she stepped over the, the button and this little girl like effectively backflipped to the floor. <laughs> and I was trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. But that was kind of funny. <laughs> Cause it, the, the was... statue just popped out of nowhere like pulling out a, a fake head out of some cotton candy. <laughs> it was amazing. I kind of want that statue. The sacrilegious murder. St. Francis Covenant in Amarillo, Texas, was the site of a horrific murder on Halloween night, 1981. Across the street from the Covenant in Amarillo lived a disturbed individual, 17-year-old Johnny Frank Garrett. Johnny! <gasps> Johnny, yeah. what did you do? Johnny, what did you do? What did you mean? I haven't even learned what I supposedly <laughs> did. Adrian, How am I supposed to defend Adrian, myself? Yesterday was a really shitty day at work, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And we had... Uh, what's it called? So, we had um, a mass casualty incident where, like, six people... Where, like, we had to clean six beds. Like stat we had like five minutes to clean these six beds four trauma beds two regular beds because of a car accident and johnny randomly texted me and then i was like he was like oh i'm still driving and i was like johnny was the one that caused it oh my fucking god <laughs> and you know what he did he just gave me like the what is it the little cutie emoji he was basically like hee hee <laughs> it was i don't know what he's talking about on that halloween night he decided to break into the convent where one of the nuns who was asleep woke up and found him standing above her, 76-year-old sister, Tadea Hello. Benz. Adrian, shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's probably what he sounded like, and that shit is terrifying. No. 76-year-old. In the middle of the night, you just hear. Hello. I would be terrified. I'd be terrified, though. After seeing what Mr. Frog does, horrified. Scarier than any fucking horror movie out there. Scarier than those pansy-ass art cloud. <laughs> Don't hate me, I love Terrifier. Anyway. 76-year-old Sister Tadea Benz could do nothing as the 17-year-old <laughs> assaulted her and then proceeded to stab her 46 times, ending the poor woman's life. Garrett left her to bleed out but not before leaving a mountain of evidence against him. They found his fingerprints and DNA on and near the corpse, which resulted in his arrest. He was found guilty and sentenced to death via a lethal injection in 1991. So at least he was taken out, but I don't know how much... I'm gonna put a stop to this, Adrian. You're gonna... you're, you're banned. <laughs> I'm banned um, from. You're banning him and his sound effects. I'm banning him from California. <laughs> That's it. You're not allowed. No, Arizona's allowed. <laughs> 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 throwing Adrian into prison. <laughs> Halloween candy. 
On Halloween night of 2011, a woman, Maria Adams, 49, was stabbed by a neighbor, a friend, multiple times with several steak knives. So like, not just one, this bitch grabbed every knife she had in her arsenal and like, just kind of went at it. Her What's up with all these Marias getting murdered? Yeah, right? <laughs> I guess just don't be named Maria on Halloween, or else you're just gonna have a bad time. Everyone's about to change their name after this video. <laughs> Adrian, that wasn't a book- that wasn't worthy of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, anyway. <laughs> Her supposed friend, Leto Peoples, 55, stabs Maria over missing bags of Halloween candy. Peoples accused Maria of taking the bags but when she claimed she didn't do so, he became enraged and started to attack her. She tried her best to defend herself, but was sadly unable to. Afterwards, she was taken to the hospital in critical condition and died shortly thereafter. He stabbed her over fucking Halloween candy. You guys. Damn. They must have the big size candy, candy bar. <laughs> Oh, for like king size bars? If someone took my fucking king size bars, I don't know. No, I don't think so, because it was bags of Halloween candy, right? So he was just giving away like small treats inside bags. Damn, I mean, the fun size. I mean, I'm not saying it was justified. Because it wasn't the family size. <laughs> exactly. I get what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting, your priority. <laughs> Like if if she if like she took if someone took my king size candy bar, we're gonna have problems, you know. <laughs> we got it here. We got his confession, Adrian. <laughs> That's right. Ignore the body on the news you find tomorrow in Huntington Park. <laughs> hey, I'm just kidding. If that the, if the that house? actually if that actually happens, that wasn't me. <laughs> Um, Adrian, you know the truth. You're gonna hear a knock you know on the, the door, door, and you're gonna hear hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, orange socks. On Halloween 1979, the body of an unidentified woman was found near Interstate 35, right outside, right outside Georgetown, Texas. Investigators found that she was strangled to death, and there were signs that indicated that she had been sexually assaulted right before her untimely demise. The 20-year-old Jane Doe had nothing on her but a silver, oval-shaped ring on her hand, and the only thing she was wearing was a pair of orange socks. Because Jane Doe was never identified, she was nicknamed after the only piece of garments she was wearing, orange socks. Come a few years later, serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to Orange Socks' murder, but would later recant his confession. Upon further investigation, it was found that Lucas could not have killed Orange Socks, as he was likely as he was likely working all day. Regardless, Lucas? yeah, uh, Henry Lee Lucas. I also should do more research as uh -oh. well, but he was a uh, I was gonna say popular. <laughs> he was a infamous killer, is what I meant to say. Regardless, he died in 2001 in prison, and the murder of Orange Socks would remain a cold case. Uh, uh, that one is still kind of, I guess, more on the sad side, only because it's a Jane Doe and we don't know who she is. I feel like she, at the very least, should be given a proper, like, um, burial, you know? like Identity? Yeah, an identity, a proper burial, and have her n a name at least engraved on some kind of gravestone. It's just, that one, when, I remember when researching that one, that one did just kind of upset me a little. Cause Damn. Was, she deserves. Like, the thing is, like, if there's no DNA or anything, no, there's like, nothing to her, her, and no like, one claimed her. Are you gonna identify her? I'll look into that one again too. But I'm just saying, like, what's it called? It's just really sad that she didn't get the chance to like die properly. A lot of people don't, and it's just you know, I think people should be able to die properly, if that makes sense. <gasps> like, I don't think we get that choice. No, we don't. <laughs> but after like I know it's gonna sound corny but after like JJK and after hearing that I'm like yeah people should be able to die like properly and then there's Johnny fucking doing vehicular manslaughter <laughs> <laughs> anyway the man who killed Halloween oh this is the last entry by the way Ooh. oh this Are is you? the story this is one of the most yippee 
Adrian, you're a dick. <laughs> anyway, this is probably the most interesting Hello. story. <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> How is it interesting, Jordy? <laughs> Explain well, himself. Can I can I can I speak for like without being interrupted for like more than like five seconds? Huh? Are you guys? Did you guys leave? Hello. Phil aside, the murder of one's own child. Are you done? Pretty pretty good title. Are you done? <laughs> 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 Adrian, what? Can't... Your titles need more flair. The sounds make it better. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Philicide. The murder of one's own child is one of the most horrific things a parent could do, and it would take a seriously disturbed individual to do so. Meet Ronald Clark O'Brien, who on Halloween night, 1984, was responsible for this very act. O'Brien at the time was in great debt, and to try and counteract that, he took out life insurance on his own son with the intention of killing him. To collect on his health insurance, he laced pixie sticks with potassium cyanide, which if you didn't know is actually incredibly lethal. I don't think that needed to be said, but it's there. He gave the pixie sticks to his daughter, his son, and his son's friend. But ultimately, only his son ate the candy. The community went into a panic, but suspicion quickly fell upon O'Brien. Once arrested, he maintained that he was innocent throughout the entire duration of the trial, but was ultimately convicted in 1984 and sentenced to death, which was eventually carried out one year later. This part is the why I find this uh, this particular story super interesting because, like, you know, the whole urban legend of like uh, people poisoning or drugging your candy. Oh, is that where it comes from? It stems from this case, this particular case. Although it's not really common, like I don't think it's actually happened since this case. You know, there's also the whole thing that people say, "Oh, watch out for your kids' candy. What's it called? They could have like weed and shit, right?" I can promise you, anyone out there, any parents potentially listening, no one is giving your kids edibles. That shit is expensive. <laughs> that yeah. shit is for me, myself, and I. Mean, I don't exactly. want time to share. Exactly. Adrian's this will be edibles. me with my edibles. Uh, yeah, Adrian's edibles, the ones that give you the out-of-body experience, he's not giving that shit away on Halloween. <laughs> be so fucking for real. Anyway. Fuck no. His story would later become the origin for urban legends like the Candyman and the horrific tales of something dangerous hidden inside your candy. His cruel, demented act truly scarred the image of Halloween. And it's because of him that many don't celebrate the holiday to even this day. Uh, so that's why you said he's the man who killed Halloween. Mm-hmm. He kind of uh... really ruined the image for a lot of people. Something that still carries on to this day. I literally saw a Twitter post the other day. I have fuck. I'm gonna have to, I would have to find it, but it says something along the lines of like, "Oh yeah, I don't take my kids out trick or treating because people lace candy with like drugs and shit," which again, not true. <laughs> uh, but what's it called? This is why he kind of tainted the image of Halloween, despite being only one person. You know, in only one case. It was such a severe case that it really did drive the entire community in a panic. And still drives people into a panic to this day. Anyway. To, back to the conclusion. Oh, anything else you guys want to say before I conclude? If there is someone giving out edibles for Halloween, give me your address. I'll stop by <laughs> for everyone else. I'll Shoot. keep those children safe. <laughs> Shoot the Addy. <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, Adrian, come over for Halloween. I'll I will, your, I will make the sacrifice. <laughs> I'll make the sacrifice. Alright. For this one, please don't interrupt. Give me your buddy. Fuck <laughs> Adrian, you heard. You heard. <laughs> no interrupting. Hey, he didn't start it. He did not start it. Fair. Despite what you've heard, Halloween is still an amazing holiday. One you can spend with your friends or family and one that should actually be celebrated. 
don't spend your day indoors, unless of course you're watching a horror movie. Whatever you decide to do, just remember, be safe. I would hate to see you end up on a list like this. Ciao.